Hey everyone, Tim Lewis here, back in the studio. I'm um, gonna give a quick video on how to edit. Uh, I've been making videos on how to edit different things, but I never really said, hey, this is how you edit. Uh, so this video is kind of for more beginner, um, but you know, if you don't really know the formal way on how to edit, this is also a good video to watch as well. So I'll go from uh, setting up your files, actually editing your video, and then also exporting. So let's get started. Okay, so here I have just a uh, video from a friend. She asked me to edit something for her. So, so this is just how I set up my project. I have a main folder here um, with uh, subfolders here. This is where I keep all the media from the camera. Um, I label it media and audio is right there, that's the song I'll be using for the background. So this is just a quick little um, GoPro video of an Australia trip. Um, so let's get started on setting up the project. I have Premiere Pro here. Um, we'll go to new project, um, I'll title it Australia. Change the location to this. I usually keep the Premiere project separate from everything else just to keep everything neat. So I'll, start, I'll uh, create a folder here. I'll title it Premiere, that's usually what I do. And all the Premiere files and all the, the project file and everything is all in its own area. Uh, video rendering and playback, I usually use OpenCL. Uh, if you have it, like on this Mac, then you should use it. Um, that's all good. If you don't really need capture, scratch disks, usually keep it the same as project. And so, you know, when I created that Premiere project, all those scratch files and everything will be in that folder, so it's nice and neat. Uh, so, in just settings, this is something new, so I really haven't done anything with it yet. But, uh, so let's just click OK, and we're all set. Uh, make sure for workspaces, do editing as the main one. This is just a good um, workspace to begin with. So, real quickly, what we have here is the project window, which is, which is where all your files are, your audio, your music, your media, your all your video files. This is the source clip where you can uh, preview the files that you uh, look at in the project file. So this is the source and this is the program window which is the final uh, video that you'll you'll see. A lot of people don't really know the difference between source and program. There you go. Timeline, that's where you're actually editing your, your footage here. And uh, also there's different things here. History, markers, uh, we'll get into that in another video. Effects, you know, really, really good transitions and everything. Uh, info about the file, and then your media browser as well, which I don't really use, but you can. So, we'll get started on importing the media. Uh, I'll double click here, and that'll open up uh, the finder. So, I'm gonna need to import media and audio, so I'm gonna select both of those folders and click import. Really good thing is that when you import a folder, it automatically creates a bin, which is, which is great. As you can see, all the files are here, not labeled. Uh, if you like to label your, your um, files, then you can just highlight it, hit enter, and then just label it like that, hit enter again, and there you go. That's just really good for um, just organizing and everything. Organization is key in editing for sure. Um, I'm just going to undo that. But uh, so let's just get started real quickly. Let, you know, this is, oh, look at that. That's a, that's a nice. So what I did right there was I double clicked the file, brought it to the source window, and then if you just click the space bar, or the play button right here, it, it will play. Let's begin. Um, I, you know, I, uh, I like that, that's a good starting. So I'll hit I on the keyboard, the letter I, and that creates an endpoint on the, on the source window. Uh, continue playing right about there. Yeah, I'll back up just a little bit. Right there, I'll hit the O button, so I and O together, so for the out point. So basically what that is, is that that creates an in and out point, so when you bring the file to the timeline, it just brings in that section of the file, not the whole entire thing. So all you have to do, once you have the in and out point, just click the video and drag. Boom, there it is. It automatically creates the sequence settings based on the settings of the video, so um, you guys, I mean, you usually don't have to go to file, new, sequence, um, and you know, deal with all that. Basically, if you already have the footage that you're using, just click and drag and it'll automatically create the settings. It's so much easier. Here's when editing begins. Um, I can zoom in and out. That's what I usually do is hold down the Alt Option button on a Mac uh, and uh, use the scroll button to scroll in and out and that's just easy 
an easy way to kind of just zoom out when I need to or zoom in when I need to. So as you can see, in and out point here is the in and out point here. But let's say you want to extend it, just, you know, hover over here. You can see these little cursors here and all you have to do is just click hold and drag and you can continue that. Um, I'm going to undo that. Um, so, you know, just keep going with the, uh, with the video here. It's, uh, you know, in point. Now let's say that you don't want the audio. Um, th these are all kind of GoPro videos, so the audio isn't good anyways. So here you can drag video only or drag audio only. Uh, so for this, I would drag the video only. And as you can see, the audio stays there. Uh, to delete audio really quickly, hold down the option button, click, delete, boom. Um, so continue editing. Okay, so I finished editing this. Uh, and while I was editing this, I thought of a few things that would be helpful for you guys. Uh, so uh, up first, if you guys want to do a cross dissolve, which is a, a dissolve between two clips, um, for example, this is what it looks like here. Boom, right there. So basically, it goes from the splash and is dissolve right into the dive. So. Um, if you guys want to do something like that, all you have to do is um, click in between two clips right here so you get that red and then uh, hit Command D and then you'll get the default uh, transition which is the cross dissolve. That is the default transition that comes with Premiere. If that's not the default transition uh, on your program, all you have to do is uh, go down to Effects, Video Transitions, Dissolve, Cross Dissolve is right there. And then you can just click and drag it over, and there it is right there. Um, and if you don't want to do Command D, you could also do right click, apply default transitions, and uh, so that's all set. Uh, and once that transition is there, you can um, expand it or contract it. All you have to do is just hover over the edge and you get that icon, and you can expand there, make it longer, and then take it all the way down to, I believe, two frames. One, two, yeah, or just two frames. So that's the dissolve. Uh, usually every video needs a title. So I went over here and just created, a, you know, just a quick little uh, title here. Uh, to do that, you go up to File, New, Title. I'll just title it, Title. <laughs> and uh, just so I'm not confusing you, we'll start there, so it looks there. That's the live preview, so you'll know what it looks like. Click anywhere and then just type there, and there it is. Um, you can change the color to, let's do some steep red. Change the size here, boom. If you wanna center it easily, that's the uh, horizontal center and that's the vertical center. And if you click both, that hits it right in the dead center. Um, so that's easy. Uh, you can do drop shadow, um, you know, inner and outer strokes, a bunch of different things here. Uh, you can play around, but that's pretty much what it looks like. Font here, and you can also do shapes. Um, so you click out of that window, and then that saves the title here in the project window. So just click and drag that over onto the timeline above everything else. Um, this is kind of like a layered, stacked type of thing here. So, um, and there it is, right there. There's the title. It only shows up right where it, sh you know, it shows up in the timeline. And of course, you can still treat it like a regular clip. You can change the scale and stuff. Uh, I wouldn't recommend doing that because that ruins the quality of the actual title. So um, if you want to change the size of it, I would go straight into this and uh, change it there. Um, to, oh yeah, to do that, I just double clicked uh, the clip right there and then and it opens up. So yeah, that's title. Last but not least, the last thing you always want to do is audio. Um, if you see here, these are the peaks here and uh, that's a little loud um, but I'll, I'll keep it because it's always it's, it's a fun fun video here um, but right here as you can see it peaks right here which is not good uh, so what you'll do is you can adjust the audio using this bar here and just bring it down I'll say maybe five decibels maybe see how that looks a little low bring it back up just a bit that looks pretty good so you usually want to keep it around negative 6 to negative 3. It can dip down to negative 12. Just don't make it go over 0. So there you go. Uh, oh, you might be asking, what's this adjustment layer? So basically what adjustment layers is, I can get into it in another video, but basically is you can apply effects onto this layer and it affects every single clip below it. Um, it's just a quick, easy, quick and easy way to um, 
especially if you have a lot of clips like this. Just a quick and easy way to apply an effect to all the clips on the timeline. Uh, so that's it. So we can probably go and export this. I'll hit Command M for export. And it'll bring me up to this window. Uh, I'm going to change the format to H.264. That's a good safe video format for YouTube. Uh, and you can also preview it here to make sure it looks good. Okay, everything looks good there. Good. Um, to change the name, click this. And I also want to change it to a different spot. I also make a folder just for exports, so I'll create a new folder and label it exports there. So, um, Good. So that looks good. I would do render at maximum depth, VBR two pass. That means it goes through the encoding process twice to make it, you know, a little bit neater. Target bit rate and maximum bit rate. That looks pretty good. You don't. YouTube doesn't really do much, and with a, this quality of video, that's fine. And use res maximum render quality. And uh, I'm gonna cue it. So basically what Q does brings up uh, media encoder. If you don't have media encoder, um, you should, but if you don't, you can also do uh, export and it'll export right within uh, Premiere. The great thing about encoder is that you can encode something while still editing on another project on uh, Premiere. So it looks like this is all set and all you have to do is click play and that begins the rendering process and now you wait. So that about does it. This video looks great and uh, I can't wait to show it to my friend. Uh, if you guys have any questions, comment down below. I'll be happy to answer any questions. Uh, if you saw something that you would like me to elaborate on, uh, please let me know in the comments below. Again, uh, like and subscribe right here and uh, I'll see you guys next time.